Hi, and welcome to Patrick Day's inaugural podcast. Uh, this is the first and hopefully a series of podcasts that I'm going to be doing that's going to be outlining uh, the creative uh, process I've gone through to develop a photography shooting table. So essentially what I want to do is create a, pro a, a product photography table that will allow me to do certain things that uh, just a, a standard table will not. Um, so what I've decided to do is, is develop this as, a, as an ongoing project and I'm going to document how I do, do create the whole thing um, and uh, essentially give, give away the whole idea so everybody can, can do it on their own. But uh, um, hopefully uh, uh, you'll learn a few things and I'm going to learn a few things that go along. This is uh, uh, going to be a, a big learning experience for me as far as developing these podcasts. This is something I want to do on an ongoing basis, uh, on a continual uh, ongoing basis. Um, uh, so uh, we're going to have a few flaws as we go along. I'm going to be stumbling on my words, and uh, this being the first video, hopefully it's going to get better as we go. So uh, essentially what I've done is I've defined uh, my requirements for developing this table. First of all, I want to do a reflective base on it. You've seen the, the uh, standard product, uh, product on white photography, and I'll flash one here. Click. Yeah, uh, a basic um, uh, object on a white uh, mat base. It creates a nice shadow. It's it's uh, it's it's pretty, but I want to take it to the next level. I want to have a reflective base. There are a couple of ways of doing this. The first way is simply taking it on the, on the mat and then doing a Photoshop, just copying and pasting it and then shadowing it out. A lot of work involved in that. As far as I'm concerned, I would rather just go ahead and do it in the camera, get it done uh, uh, that way, and uh, minimize my time in the chair as I'm taking as I'm developing the shots. Uh, the second thing I want to do, and this is the reflective uh, base done in Photoshop, it will not. It adds even more work actually. Is a 360 degree view where I take the object. And I'm able to spin it around, rotate it. You've seen the Zappos uh, uh, shots, um, and uh, I believe Newegg does it as well, where you have the object and you're able to spin it around and it has a 360 degree turn to it. So I want to do, be able to do that. Um, the next thing I want to do, there are a lot of tables out there that um, can handle small objects. Uh, you know, dolls, coins, you know, very, very lightweight, you know, shoes about as heavy as they, they want to get. Um, and even, even at that size, the, the cost on those is exorbitant. I think uh, they're, you know, I think your entry level is about $2,500 uh, for something like that. Um, and they, they're great products, but I think that for what they are, they're, they're a little expensive. But I want to take it to the next level. I want to do larger objects. I'm not going to shoot cars and motorcycles and boats in, uh, on this. But what I want to be able to do is, is take uh, something, I'm, I'm going to target for about, uh, about a, maybe a, a yard, or for you European people, about a meter cube and uh, able to um, uh, support about uh, a little over 100 pounds. So take it to that level. The next thing I want to do is, I, I, this is going to be a business for me eventually. So uh, actually doing the, the product photography, not necessarily selling the, the, the table itself. Uh, but that's always a possibility looking at you, Kickstarter. Um, so the next thing I want to do is have a fire and forget um, process to this where essentially during during the spinning I want to set up the object on the table press a button and fire and forget just let it let it run and when it's done it'll let me know I'll pop on the next uh, next object and so um, uh, with with this the, the fire and forget I'm going to build in some um, automated processes in there we're going to uh, 
delve into the world of um, Arduino, um, and we're going to go into uh, pro uh, mechanics, uh, drivers, stepper motors, robotics, the whole the whole nine yards on that. So that's going to be fun. Finally, I mean the, mo the most important thing about this is I want it fast and repeatable. Uh, I want to do this as a business. I want to be able to have a stack of products waiting to be shot and very production line to be able to set it on the table, press a button, it's fire, it's spin and shoot, control the camera all in one while I'm prepping the, ne the next object. And then when that's done, swap it out, boom. And I want to be able to do, I want to do that fast, I want to do a repeatable so that it, I set it up and I don't have to worry about setting it up every single time. So I want a very controlled environment and I want to know that the equipment is going to be uh, dependable. Those are essentially my, my uh, first, uh, first draft of my uh, uh, deliverables on this or my requirements. So as we go through, I'll let you know how it goes along and uh, uh, treat you to some, some of the things I've learned and some of the problems that uh, I encounter as I go along. All right, thank you. Thank you for watching this podcast. Questions, comments, or contributions, you can email me at patrick at patrickdayphotography.com. I always appreciate a comment here on YouTube, so feel free to post down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at Patrick Day Photo. Um, I'm also continuing a blog called Photogagog Blog, all one word, dot com. And I will post it right here so it's easy to see. All right. Thank you again, and uh, hopefully we'll have the next podcast up here in just a week or two. Thank you. Bye.